Um, thank you for inviting me here, and I've been to this group before, and I've done a ton of work as a visiting artist in Western Detroit Public Schools. Mm. So um, I don't know if any of you were teachers at, um, let's say, I've been to Rogers and Iroquois in the high school and all over the place. Um, so. What I am going to be doing tonight is I am going to make a four color print. And I'm going to use this board first. Oh, oh. Uh, yeah, like since we have it, yes. It down. Set it down, okay. So I'm gonna describe this process briefly oh. to you. Thank you, you, you help me because I can't see mm -hmm. what's going on. Um, so this yeah, shows you the steps. And as Nancy Jo said, I'm using one piece of linoleum to do a multiple color print. So the first thing I do is begin with a drawing, which I'll talk more about in a minute. But when I start on the block, I am going to cut out just the white parts of the drawing, and then I'm going to print one color on all my paper. So if I'm doing an addition of print, I might do 40 or 50 sheets of paper. If once I am done printing that color, in this case it was kind of this blue-gray color, once I'm done printing that color, I'm going to cut out from that same piece of linoleum what stays that color and print the next color on top of it. So I print, in this case I did green here, do 40 sheets with green over the blue. And then I cut out what stays green, print the gray, cut out what stays gray, print the dark green pine trees, the last part. So the block is destroyed as I make the print. Um, it really helps if you're dyslexic like me because everything is backwards. <laughs> and a lot of people have trouble because you're used to additive processes generally if you're painting. Um, watercolors sometimes do a little bit of subtractive stuff. But you really have to make your brain work backwards, which is challenging for some people. Like I said, for me it happens to work and I think it's one of the reasons I do this stuff. Um, so I am going to try to dive right in here. So before I came, I made this sketch. And what I do when I start my, my block, I've got an idea in my head usually. But then I just take a piece of tracing paper and I trace the block. So my drawing is going to be the same size as the block. I'm sorry, I'm That's used fine. to doing this. No, thing. you're OK, I'm old school. My fault. Um, I'm just going to trace the block outline do my drawing, I planned out my colors here, mm. and then this is all done with charcoal pencils, and I have these, I actually brought some of the pencils here, so if you have questions about that, you can see what these guys are like. These are like a pastel pencil, so everything's nice and soft and smudgy. What I do when I finish the drawing is I put the drawing face down on the block, and I press with the side of the pencil, transfers the drawing, and then I use a Sharpie marker, and I just go over the lines. So when you look at this, am I in a good spot yeah, again? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm learning. Um, <laughs> you'll notice it's reversed, okay? Mm. When I print it, it's going to turn out going in this direction, the same as the drawing. Mm. One of the most cool. important things is that you hang on to the drawing throughout the process because it'll get really confusing. This is like your road map. If you don't have your directions, you're going to get lost. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do on this block is cut out the white. And because we were running a little bit behind and I was nervous, I actually started cutting out some of the white areas. And I'm only going to be cutting out white. So you're, you're basically doing a color separation. The cutters I use come in different sizes, and I don't know how well you can see it, but uh, the cutters have little numbers right on the back of the blades. And the number one is the smallest size, which I almost never use. The number five is the biggest size, and it's a really deep gouge. Um, but most of the time I'm using like a two or a three, so that's what I've got out right now. And so what I did while you all were having cookies was I started <laughs> to cut out the reflection in the moon, and I just outlined the moon here. I'm going to cut that out quickly, and then I'm going to start printing. So can you, can you show us what a block looks like uncut with a plain block? Um, Let's look down over. 
<laughs> Isn't the back the same? It's just smooth gray, right? It's just smooth yeah. gray. The only thing I cut out here is this, so it would look almost like this. When you, as you watch me do this, it's just going to be a smooth gray sheet with no cutting in it. Oh, I didn't realize it. Okay, yeah. so what I'm looking at is an imprint. Yeah. 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 So it's basically a form of stamp printing. Let me suggest, if you move to this side, it's a little okay. larger for them. I can do that. Yes, you can. Thank you. Diane, what's the material called that you're using? This is called, good question, thank you. Um, this is called Battleship Linoleum. It, honestly, it started out being used as the floor on a battleship, oh. maybe vessels. <laughs> was invented in 1851. The other thing I'm going to do, this got cold while I was talking. Oh. So I'm, I know you can't see it on the camera. I'm just oh. using my wonderful $2.99 <laughs> <laughs> Um and warming it up. I, I uh, knew that you ironed the brown um, uh, no. uh, lino but I didn't know you ironed the gray. Yeah, um, I just think it's a lot easier, and it, you've gotta be careful. I would use a low setting and not too long, don't walk away. And you can even do things if it was a warm sunny day, you can even put it in a window and just mm -hmm. the sunlight through the window will you know, soften it up a bit. You can have your dog or cat lie on it, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> warm it up a bit. Is it? You don't want to get it too soft. Never mind, I answered my own question. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, and if, if you have a question, just call out because I'm looking downward and I may not see you. So if I, I don't have the reverse in my head, but if you're going to print the white first, Okay, the white is actually the paper ah, that's oh, showing through again. Oh, all right, so then you're cutting out the moon. Right, I'm cutting out the is. moon so it never gets ink. Gotcha. The ink is going to go on the raised surface. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Which will be the rest of the linoleum block. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so you're, you're going to cover the whole block. Yes. White, except for that. No, 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 no the whole no, block no. would. I'm going to print black oh, first. Oh, the paper's white. Yeah, oh, and black first. Before I go ahead and print, I'm just going to talk a bit about safety. So if you try to do this, you notice I was turning the block and I always keep my free hand in back of the blade. Even after all the years I've been doing this, I still slip occasionally. If you go like this, it's going to be a disaster. And people come into my booth at Cornhill or whatever, and they show me their scars. <laughs> It's just, you know, and I taught school, and same thing, I get one kid in every class who just did not listen. Um, so that's the most important thing. Do you use a, um, a cutting uh, block that uh, oh, like hooks a, on the edge of the table? Yeah, a bench hook is what I call it. Yes. Took me a minute. Um, I don't, I think, I mean, when I was teaching, I had kids use that. I, well, for one thing, most times I have a bigger block than this, and the bench hook is too small. And I've just learned from habit to keep my hand out and just keep turning it. So um, it's a good thing if you're starting out and you're, you're concerned that you're going to forget and put your hand in front. So I have cut out just the white parts in this drawing. And now I'm going to ink the block with black. And the reason, and if you read a text on block printing, it will usually tell you to print the lightest color first and move to the darkest color. Mm -hmm. um, I don't agree with that. And this is not going to look wonderful because I usually, I'm using oil-based inks for my professional stuff. And I give it two or three days in between colors to dry, mm -hmm. and this is going to be very wet. But the ink is very viscous that I use for this process. I'm sorry I brought that. Yeah. Good thing I brought it. Um, so it will cover pretty well. May I hold one of these up to the camera? Sure. So I have 
Speedball. And this is water-based ink that I use for demonstrations. Um, okay. What I also did, and I don't have enough for everybody, but I have a few copies. I actually made this thing a document, and it's got a whole list of all the materials and where you would get them, and it's also got um, steps of the process here, and then um, if we run out and people want to learn more, the other <coughs> things, these are two QR codes I made. One is for my website, and the other is for a landing page to get on my mailing list. So if you wanted to learn more or get a copy of this downloaded, you can do that. I'll be able to include that with the video. I figured out how to do that. <coughs> oh, good. So I'll take a copy and. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay, so what I, I'm going in different directions here, and you can probably see that the where I cut out mm -hmm. is the white parts. Those are the parts that didn't get inked. And because it's cut out, you don't have to be too concerned about ink falling into where you cut out because um, you won't. To an extent. To an and extent, this yeah. kind of came out gloppy. I should have probably mixed it a little bit. I use palette knives to mix my ink and I'll be mixing the other colors. This just came straight out of the tube and I should have done a little bit of work with it because it was separating a bit. Mm -hmm. But um, next one I do, this is almost on a little too thick. If you get it on too thick, it can fill in small lines. <coughs> What I'm going to do for this one, this is, the first color is a little different, so I'm just going to lay that on top. And you can see how thin the paper is. I don't know. Can you see the outline of the block through there? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, this tool is called a Baron. It's a Japanese wood block printing tool. And all I'm going to do is rub this. First print never comes out real well. I, I just take for granted that it's going to end up in the trash. <laughs> But it's, it gives me information. I, I hang around, I keep it around because I can use it as a test print. So I'd like to see your trash. I'd <laughs> like to grade your trash. <laughs> so I'm not entirely pleased with that. And what I'm going to try to do now. Are you expecting uniform black across yeah, that? Yeah, I want uniform black. Like I said, that was kind of runny and I should have mixed it up and I was talking and not paying attention. Which is, can you? I don't know if you can hear, there should be like a sandpaper sound to this. It's getting better. Yeah, and this is more like what I like. Can I look at what you, how you ink your black? Sure. So I don't know what you can see on the screen there, but I'm just going in all different directions here. And you try to just put a little bit on at a time. I think that's going to be a little better. And since that does not take a long time to dry, you have time from when you roll it to when you print it. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. This stuff would probably dry in 15, 20 minutes. Okay. The oil-based ink that I use at home takes days sometimes. Yeah. So what is the base of this, not oil? It's water, yes. <coughs> And that's ink, not paint? It is ink, not paint. Good question. What is the difference? It looks like paint. Does, how does it act differently from paint? I think I somebody tried acrylic paint in school, and it dries too quickly. There's... Um, that makes sense. Probably just the... Partially the texture, probably. The texture. I mean, I'm not a chemist, but there's something different in the chemistry of this that... Okay, that's still a little light. We'll try again. I'll hold it under here. Okay. Oh, wow. I'm cool. a different... Oh, yeah. Yeah. But she wants it. Yeah, and see now, this is coming yeah. out. I don't know if you can oh, see it. I got a different tube of black. This ink is coming out much more as I would expect it. It's almost like peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
and I think it's going to give me a better product. I'm going to blame it on the ink anyway. Yeah, this is behaving more like. So typically you use an oil paint? An oil paint. <coughs> an oil paint. <coughs> yes. That's what I was struggling with. I didn't know there was such a thing. Yeah, you have to hunt for it. It's not um, <coughs> readily accessible. So is that the norm for doing these kind of prints? Or the, do people use other things? The ink or the water? The, the ink. The ink, yes. The style of ink. Yeah, the style of ink. Okay, this is looking a lot better. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm actually getting some kind of like a texture in here, and mm -hmm. I can hear the sound of it. So I'm cautiously optimistic this is going to be better. So the question is, what paper are you using? Okay, the paper I'm using, when I hold it up to the light here, can you see how light mm -hmm. is translucent? Is it like rice it, paper? It is. Rice paper is kind of a misnomer. This is Japanese mulberry paper, and okay. people would probably refer to it as rice paper, but mulberry is actually a tree or a right. shrub. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it is a Japanese handmade paper. There was a mulberry tree. Is this the final paper that you're going to be printing on? Yep, this is it. So you're beyond the um, trial yes. piece. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's, that's a lot different. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. oh wow. Okay, I'm going to blame it on the ink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it All even right. peeled off a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, as soon as I took it out of the tube, it was like, oh, yeah. So I saw your work at Jeanette Monsignor's house. Yeah. A giant piece. Yeah. I call it a giant piece. I, I mean, I think it's a metonic. Magnificent. So how did you, I mean, between what you're doing here and there, that. Okay. Same thing. It's, it's the same thing. thing. I lot. had a bigger brayer. I, it's more like a rolling pin, six inches in diameter, all plastic. It's very um. light. Uh, but, I mean, the ink was spread right across this whole plate, roll into it, roll it on the block. I'm still using the same pressing tool that I did here. And so it's the same thing, only bigger. Mm -hmm. You were admiring the way the sky is graded. Yes, and I'm going to show you that technique, technique that's called a rainbow roll. And I will be doing some of that shortly. Thank you. And that's one of my favorite things. And that is, when you look at Japanese woodblock prints, you will see that in the print. Now, how many prints might you do for each for when you're doing a production? For this size, mm -hmm. I might do um, 40 or so, maybe 50. If I'm doing something big like the big one we were just talking about, I only, I, well, I started out, I think, with 10 sheets of paper, ended up with eight. So um, it really depends. And I was doing that for Jeanette's son as a commission. And I, you know, I yeah. just knew I, it was something very specific and I probably wouldn't sell too many to other people. Right. So. And how large was that, roughly? Uh, it framed up 20 by 30. This okay. print is 23 by 14, so it's slightly larger than that. It looks really good on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad. How big an addition did you uh, do for the musliners? For the what? Musliners. Oh, I, I only did about 10 prints, as I recall. And how big an addition do you do usually? For something that size, I mean, um, I might do 15. I wouldn't do too many at that size. Mm -hmm. I just saw a corner here. I'm just going to cheat. That's nice that you're, you're able to do that. artistic license. Yeah. Right. Well, that's good. Okay, these are coming out much better. I'm just going to do one more and then I'll move on. Can I grab one of these? Sure. You want me to hold it up? Sure. The audience was asking. 
And the cool thing about this is they are all unique. Yeah, they are not. I'm not a machine. It's, <laughs> it printmaking sometimes after the prints are usually numbered they're part of an edition yes. series and it'll say one over eight or two over eight or whatever right. um, sometimes you'll see something that says artist proof oh. and that is a print that isn't quite the same as the rest of the edition the artist might have changed colors up or did a little carving and saying oh no I need to change this for the rest of the prints so it's it's more of an individual print than the others so what I'm doing now, I'm going to take a quick intermission here, clean up. So my question for you is, what am I going to be doing next? Getting the ink off the block. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, I, another color, but I don't know what. Okay. You have to, you have to carve Anybody it. have a guess? I'm going to put another color that will show on top of black. Yeah, but I have to carve first. Yeah, well, carve yeah. first yeah. I have to carve first. So what color am I cutting out? What you want to be Where's your map? Where's your skin? Oh, yeah. And you want just black. Yes. Yeah. What you want to keep? Where did it go? Oh, there you go. Yeah. 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 Okay, what color am I cutting out? You're gonna have oh, you're going to cut all the black out, all yeah. the black lines. Oh, oh wow. Oh, Wait, oh, why? Because you want to stay black. You might have to repeat that for the video. Yeah. 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 Ye
because I'm going to try to warm this up a little bit. And it will also help dry it. And you warm it so it's easier to cut? Yes. Mm -hmm. so I don't know if you can see my hand real well. Can you see the arthritis? Yes. Yeah. We all sympathize. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Diane, do you ever use a thing? Yeah, I am Lots of nothing that goes around here. Trying to fit in here. Uh, do you ever use do you ever use a block with a wooden base? No. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up because that was one of the points. I'm gonna make it on that sheet that I love. Um if I would, especially if I'm doing something large like Jeanette's print, to try to, I mean, it makes it heavier, makes it more expensive, and when I'm registering, which is lining up the colors I'm gonna show you in a minute, if you have something large, it's not such a big deal with this, but if you have something large, you can't roll it. So with that print that I mm -hmm. did, I, I would line it up and I would still have this end up. I'd get this side, and just slowly start to roll it down. If it's on a piece of wood, it's wow. not going to do that. Uh -huh. wow. And I don't need anything heavier. I don't need to spend more money. <laughs> you know. yeah. More to store. Yeah. <laughs> so at this point, I am. What do I want to do? Go ahead. Toward this you. Way. Toward yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I am cutting out the parts. I just started cutting out the black pine tree. I'm going to cut out all the areas that are black, nothing else. I don't think, I think it's up to Judy anymore. No. And you notice I'm turning. Let me move up here so you can see yeah. better. Yeah. I am just turning this every which way so that I don't cut my fingers off. <laughs> <laughs> Does the oil wipe off that easily? The oil, no. I have to use mineral spirits, and um, I just spent thousands of dollars. I hope my studio is in a walkout basement at my house, and I love it because there's lots of natural light. And I have three big windows down there, mm -hmm. and the windows were the original 1954 windows, oh. hmm. and I couldn't open them. So I just spent money so I can open them and get some ventilation. Nice. Yes. And I love it. Yes. And you can see that I'm not pushing. I mean, this is cutting pretty easily. Mm -hmm. And it wouldn't be quite so easy. Do you use easy cut or? No. OK. And I'll tell you why. Um, can it's you repeat very, that question for the recording? Do you use or, 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 oh. Diane too. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't use the easy cut because okay. it's very floppy and it's also very hard to get detail in it. So I don't think it gives you as good a product. I mean, if I was working with a bunch of middle school kids, I sure would. Mm -hmm. But um, no, I and I don't even think you can buy the easy cut, the soft cut. Um, in the sizes I would need. I buy the linoleum in a roll mm -hmm. because I go through a lot of it. And um, you know, I just don't even think that's an option with a soft cut, but it just doesn't give you, it's great if you want to try it out and you're feeling a little nervous and just get, you know, get the feel of it. It's a good way to start and it's great for the kids, but I wouldn't wouldn't use it. So Nancy Jo, do you use the linoleum that's mounted? Yes. Oh, yes, I, I, I've used the pink um, and I uh, felt it was too floppy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we had a quest good question over here. Why don't we use Not from me. the really yeah. first uh, Okay, so, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, so others can hear it. Clueless here. I said, how do you not cut all the way through to the, to the... Okay, this has a burlap backing on it, uh -huh. and I have cut holes in it. Uh -huh. As long as you don't cut it into two different pieces, you're yeah. fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. So it doesn't matter how deep you cut. Well, you want to cut deeply enough that you, the ink, if you just make like a little... Hairline scratch, the ink is going to fill it. So mm -hmm. you need to cut deep enough. 
that you're not going to have that situation, but if you cut deeper than you wanted to, it's not a big deal. Yeah. So I've always thought that um, when an artist is making like 10 prints, and if you get one of 10, that's somehow better than two of 10? Um, I think a lot of people think that, and that sort of comes from lithography. And what lithography is a printing process, but it's totally different. It's using um, a chemical process on a stone or a plate to etch into the plate, and what happens is after a number of prints, it fills in. This mm. stuff, it I wear out before the linoleum does. So, <laughs> um, you know, it's really not a question of quality. Every, like, um, it's Mark, is your name? Yes. yes. Okay, sorry. Um, yes. Mark said every print is different, and it's true. So it's finding the one that you like. And the color does change a little bit, and you know. In some printing processes, you'll have a second edition with number. No, obviously, not this because once you're through carbon, right. you're done. And I have actually done blocks where um, I've done like a set, like a monochromatic color scheme in brown and a monochromatic color scheme in blue. And it's enough to make you crazy. Um, <laughs> you have to, you know, print your first set of colors and then clean the block and do the second set in the other color scheme. And it it really taxes your brain. The whole thing taxes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to think backwards. You have to yeah. think backwards. I don't do that well. <laughs> It's a great exercise for your brain. You know, if you're yeah, I'm sure it is. If you're concerned with memory and all that stuff, that really does. There's something to that. Yeah. What point are you using? A I am using a three. That's kind of my go to. <laughs> It does help to actually sit and watch someone do it because it gives it time yeah. for the process to penetrate a little bit yeah. into my brain. Soak in. Yeah, yeah just soak when in. When you see the next color, I think it'll really help. Yeah. You can see. Yeah, the cutters just how interchange. How often do you wear out the blade? Um, well, you can see I've got this whole box here. <laughs> so I can tell after a while it's, you know, and it, somebody has to use sharpen them, and it's kind of crazy because you can buy a dozen for you know, yeah, a nominal amount. So like I now when you're doing this, the dots, <laughs> no. you're, so you're carving out between the posts. Okay. No, mm -hmm. no. she's working on the tree trunk. Do you want to hold it here? Yeah, how would I do that? <coughs> do you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so there's a tree in the end of the foreground. I'm going to get this done. Oh, I, oh, I can tell the black part, part is out. The yeah. black yeah. part is out, you're right. Yeah. And what I'm going to do is heat this up really fast. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I'm not I'm not going to be able to do <laughs> it was fun doing Same it chance. just for the kids. I bet. They were like, I'm glad I had that question. Oh, amazed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I bet they were amazed. Thank you. Very tiny. And if she wanted. Yeah.
See, now I just cut all the way through. <laughs> Good. Yeah, share. I'll show you in a minute. But it's not going to matter. <laughs> Can you see right there in that corner? Yeah. I, saw, I saw when you went through. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah, because you're cutting away where you do not want it. Of course. So trying to get the linoleum crumbs out of my way. And the next thing I'm going to do is print these green trees. Oh, right. Okay. So, got my green. I better put on the oh, green. <laughs> and the green's going to cover the black. Yeah, and okay. it's not going to do a super job just because the ink, the black ink is still wet. In the real world, you would wait in between colors. Right. <coughs> It's not the real world. No. <laughs> We're pushing this, our limits. This is the art club, not the real world. So it's going to be a little muddy because that black ink is going to still be wet and blend. Will it, will it smear a little bit? For using it your, may. It may. We'll, I'm going to try not to, but we'll see. Can you use a roller instead of the thing? I forget what you call the round thing. That you oh. oh, the Baron? You yeah. can use a brayer. Yeah. a brayer. I don't think it gives you a great product. Right. And these are these are cheap. You know, yeah. there's no reason. Oh, oh, what is that uh, little round thing made of? It is a piece of cardboard with a thin piece of bamboo wrapped around it. It's got a handle, handle on the back. <laughs> I just learned the word brayer, so it's like, yeah, there's going to be a test yeah. at the end of all yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where do you purchase your yes, supplies? Online or, or <coughs> um, the, Yeah, the Yeah, again, this handy dandy thing has oh, got okay. all that stuff, but okay. yes, I pretty much buy everything online. I lived in the Adirondacks for 15 <laughs> years. Yeah. And, I mean, there was nothing. <laughs> so if I want something, especially, you know, things like this that aren't terribly common. You're missing your own green. Yeah. yeah. The it's stuff that comes out of the tube is really ugly. Mm -hmm. It's pretty garish. So, and I'm trying, I'm putting some white into it, even though it's supposed to be a dark green, because I know I've got wet ink. Okay, I'm going to try to artificially lighten it up here. And, and the white ink will also increase the opacity. Yeah, that's really thick. I like to work wet on wet because I get a, a grain that I don't get when I um, um, work on when it's dry. Now does that matter that that block is not laying completely flat? It's giving me a hard time, yeah, okay. but I'm gonna, I'm pretty stubborn, so I'm gonna make it work. <laughs> ideally, you want it flat, though. Yeah, ideally, you do. Yes. Okay. What do you mean? Oh, uh, oh, I can't see that it's not flat. It's bowed a little bit. Yeah, yeah it is. There's a little. Not, yeah. not bad. It's just going like this. Did you not express the ink over all the parts of that? That's correct, and I was just going to make that point. Thank you. Um, because when I look at the drawing, where's the green? Right, right, there. right, there. right, there. right there. So why waste time, money, and energy? Okay, the registration. Let me get, can you see right here where I am? Yeah. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the corners and I'm going to line up one corner and this where it's bowed that is a problem. Okay. Just a yeah. touch, but there you go. 
Okay, if I get these two corners to line up, the rest of the block is going to line up as well. Then I'm always going to turn it paper up. So the tackiness of that ink really aids in keeping the paper stuck to it while yes. you're flipping it over and over. Yeah, and a lot of times I'll just give it a little love tap before I start with the brayer, but it, it isn't too slippery. If you over ink it, then it's going to start slipping and sliding. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, this is a bad print anyway, but I just wanted to kind of see how the color was going to go, so I kept... I knew it wasn't going to be a good print, but I wanted to just see how the color was going. You can't even tell them this. No, you can't. Green, if it's green, yeah, but the next one, I'm going to use one of the good sheets and we will make it work. So I'm really going to lighten this up. And that's why, even if I pull a bad print, I'll keep some of them around just so I can say, oh, I'm, I've lost this one anyway, and I don't care if I try something and it doesn't exactly work. How many did you do of this? I did, I think I did six, yes. So can I go back and make more prints of this stuff? No. 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 It's done. So that's one of the other kind of cool things is, you know, people look for, somebody asked me a question about the addition numbers and one being more valuable. I just got some linoleum in there. I'm pulling it out. Um, but if you're doing multiple blocks, you know, you can number as many as you want if you're not an ethical person. And this way, <laughs> keep you honest. Hopefully this is going to be better deal. Yeah. And this is another place, you know, lining up colors, you may lose a couple prints. So, you know, if you were doing this and oh, I have to have 20 good prints, I might actually start with 30 sheets of paper or something. Yeah. Because yeah. things happen. That would be nerve wracking. <laughs> Memorial Art Gallery had this thing called the Patron's Print. Back in the day, I don't know if they still do it, and they wanted me to do 400. Oh. No, no, I'm sorry, that was wrong. 200 four color still. prints. Oh, this is not better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why is that better? No, 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 I understand that. The green, but why does the green show up better? Um, I added, like I said, every time you do the first print, it's you just deal with it. It's going to end up in the trash. It seems like it needs like a little base of ink built up on the block. Yeah. I probably didn't put enough white in it the first time through because mm -hmm. I was I was trying to judge how much I needed and I didn't judge correctly. But I fixed it. What I can see, I don't know if you can see on the block here, but some of that black ink that I printed a couple minutes ago is actually still picking up on the block. I can uh, see yeah. it. Mm -hmm. sure. So it's just, it's... Oh, that's because it's wet. Because yeah. it's wet, yeah. I'll probably do with this. I'm going to print two more with the green. And what I'll do is I'll just um, 
next time through I'll print one less so when I'm done you'll be able to see all the stages. Well, no, I've got 20 of them left, so. Get them while they're hot. Can I get them while they're hot? Can I I I'll put you on the list. Thank you. Yeah. I'm trying to cook a okay. I didn't want to much past the black dog. The black dog. Okay. Okay. Um, Again, what color am I cutting out next? Green. 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 Very good. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody in We're a little slow, but we catch on. Can we scrape for you while you wash now, uh, your... Okay. I'll be good. All right. I'll, I'll try to... Uh, what I may do, I was going to do four colors, and what I may do... What time do you usually end your meeting? Like 8.30? They throw us out at quarter to nine. They, yeah, the library totally closes at nine, but, you know, obviously we need to finish before that to clean up. So, right. so 8.30 is good. 8.30 yeah, 30 is good. And now 8.10. Yeah. It is. Okay, it's a dragging. I'm doing um, this. This is the body. Because I'm on the two head there. May I would you permit me to pass some around to look at pass them around. They're all in uh, You just have to be careful of this. I'm not gonna touch you. No, I just wanted to Mark, I wouldn't come I near. I don't want I you to get hurt. I wouldn't dare. I just would like people to see these while there's still time. searching all 
bags. Make sure Sam gets one. She can even get a sale before the next one. Yeah. 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 Well, you know how I just printed a small portion right yes. here? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. I would just do a, like a partial run okay. across with the color. Because yeah. Oz has those little boats. Yeah, I know. And one had like five different colors in the sale. Yes, it did. I was like, <laughs> Debbie, do you really want this? And he's like, yes, I really want that led right into my next segue here. That is a rainbow roll. And what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to change this up a little bit because I'm, I'm a little nervous about time. So this sky here, and then the reflection in the lake, if I put it down here, you can see yeah. better. Yeah. Oh, except this is wet. Hang on. Um, clean up my mask. Okay. So there's gradation in the sky here. I don't know if you can see it from the sketch, but it's in my head. And so I'm going to do the rainbow roll next, even though I was going to do that as the last color, but that way you'll get definitely get to see it. Can we apply it in here, please? You can do it. <laughs> and this is the part where the kids would ooh and ah when I get to that part. Do you have workshops? I do workshops, yes. <coughs> so, yeah, if you're interested in the workshop, and the other thing, um, I'm in this artist co-op in East Rochester at the Piano Works Mall called Artisan Cove. I don't know if you, any of you have been there yet. Just opened in November, and they have a really nice workshop space. So I'm, I am thinking about doing a, a workshop in the back room there. Okay, this is semi warm and dry. All right, I'm switching to a number two cutter. So again, I'm looking at the drawing, and I want to cut out the trees and the reflection. And I think one of the neat things about this method is the textural element of it. So I'm trying to, I'm sort of twisting this cutter as I go to have it Mm -hmm. uh, Give it the appearance of a leaky kind of texture. So will you eliminate like the mountain range? I yeah, I may or will or are you just skipping it? I'm thinking about skipping it. So we'll see how timing goes here, but um, I'm gonna print the the sky and the water, water next because okay. I want to show you the rainbow roll and that's where the rainbow roll is going. Okay. So if I don't get time to do the mountain, let's play. So when you say you're trying to grab the texture of the leaves, what? 
Okay, can you see that going up the leaves, are you? Well, I'm cutting out the trees right now. Oh, the trees, okay. Yep. There's Sorry trees. About the I'm working on this area right here. Got it. By the time I get done with this, I think you'll have a pretty good understanding of the process. Um, I can tell more of you are catching on. <laughs> yeah, yes. It's thinking a little bit. I'm not sure I have the patience for it. Hello, I must be going. <laughs> Although I like cutting into those and knowing I made some stickers for myself. Do you use those little <coughs> tiny blocks to make <coughs> stamps? No, I use one. I, oh, do you I just ball? ordered yes. some. They, maybe they're, they were three by five. Mm. Or yes. maybe like, what's that? Five by seven. No, like the. And the kids are using um, erasers, right? You can make them. Those stamps, the pinky bracelet. Oh, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I would so cut small. myself if I tried to dig into something that small. I would be nervous about using that. I'd be nervous. I, I, I would have trouble holding it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 But if you have something that small, where do you hang on to it? Exactly. Exactly. It does. Yeah. So the. I just ordered the line. I don't know where it is. I know. Yeah. 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 No, we didn't think it. So, Diane, I have a picture I'm trying to do of my granddaughter, but her cheeks are so smooth. How would, I, how would you manage something like that? A portrait? It's like it's like her head, she's smelling a flower uh -huh. and it's around about, you know, maybe a seven inch circle. And her face takes up two thirds of the picture. And so I've been I, I just set it aside because I don't know what to do with her cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a block print you're doing. Yeah. Wow. Um thank you. I would probably just Mix a peachy tone. Are you, you're trying to just get that little change of color in her cheeks. Is that what you're? Well, it's just so much flat. So I thinking, yeah, I'm thinking the edges um, where there might be sh more of shading or shadowing. I could do as a separate. You could do a rainbow roll, possibly. You'd have to be very particular about how you apply it. No, I think she um, got the, uh, um, the, dark, the um, um, texture. Um, and all these that we're looking at are oil. Yes. Yeah. But I would say she did wet on wet. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at the oil based the prints you're passing around, you'll see the shimmer in the inks. Yes. And that is the oil. Uh. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. 
So Diane, if you're doing one this this size or a little larger, how many hours do you spend on one generally? I can only tell you about what it takes to do the entire edition. Yes. Um, if I was doing 40 prints this size, I would say from the time I put the design down till it's finished, it's probably about eight hours. But there's also a lot of time planned. Yeah. You know, the planning time is what people don't mm -hmm. really right. appreciate when they're planning. I'm surprised that eight hours is all it would still take. Well, the time can go really fast. fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are very cool. A matter of practice. Right. So, okay, you can see where I've cut out the green. Guys, can, can we all be quiet? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm just about. I know it's hard. But yeah, it is hard. But I'm going to do something that I think you'll really enjoy here. So I'm going to do the rainbow roll. Hmm. And make sure this is got green. I don't want yeah, green in my sky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to put out a whole bunch of white. Oh. It really is so much thicker than the other two of the white. Yeah, and I found that I started out doing painting and I found that with, well, way back in the day, I did oil paint. And like viridian green was very transparent or translucent. And yeah. then other yeah. colors, like the cadmium yellow was much more viscous. And I don't know why, again, I'm not a chemist. I don't know exactly why, but it's, and this is why I mix my colors. Because look, it would be pretty, pretty pink. Pretty pink. <laughs> What does our love paint? Oh, ask. Ask about them. We have another question. Throw your sure. questions nice and loud and she'll answer the them. The flecks, that looks like a rainbow roll, but there are yeah. little flecks. Okay. Is that a different application or just happened? It just happened. Oh. Okay, mm -hmm. and part of it's the layering of the ink and the different viscosities. All right, so I want to go from dark to light here. I'm mixing a purple right now. And then I'm going to start adding in some white here. You gotta be part masochist to do this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> right? He's talking about me. <laughs> I think she's talking about the, the, the medium in general. The medium. Yeah. Yeah. Well, specifically. It's beautiful. I'll tell you, this, um, <laughs> this technique was developed by Pablo okay. Picasso. Oh. And the reason, he, if you know about him, he was exiled. He was a native of Spain. He lived a lot of his life in France because of political pressure he had to leave the country. And when he left, he was doing lithography initially, and he couldn't move his printing press. So obviously, a linoleum block printing, you don't need a press. And mm -hmm. that is one of the reasons he got into it. And he is the one who decided to try printing rather than multiple block using one block. So the reduction process, and he called it the suicide method. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't far off. <laughs> I don't say that with a school kid. But yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm just trying to make sure this is where you're straight up. OK, so I've got two inks. Can you? Mm -hmm. You can see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. OK, so now what I'm going to do is roll into them both simultaneously. Mm -hmm. So you get a gradient right on the roller. Uh-huh. Sweet. Wow. Do you ever do more than two colors? 
Oh yeah, most of the ones, the bigger pieces are five colors. Oh and even the smaller ones that I sell are usually four. And you're using a larger brayer yes. for the larger pieces. Yes. You mean for the, for for the, the rainbow. rainbow? Oh, for the rainbow? Yeah, that's it. Oh, sorry, I missed the question. Um, I, if you get too many colors, you can probably do three. Okay. But it starts to get muddy. And think about doing this, like right now I'm only doing it a couple times over. But after you make 40 prints, all that stuff starts to yeah. blend. It's inevitable. I mean, you just can't yeah. help it. And it just turns, you've, you've all done that thing where you mix seven colors together and end up with mud. So that's, um, yeah, I wouldn't do more than three colors. Do you mind if I hold it up in front of the camera? Go right ahead. So I can see it. And the colors still don't come out very well. Good evening. The library will be closing in 30 minutes. Meeting room use ends in 20 minutes, so please use this time to wrap up your business, clean up, and prepare to leave. What happens in 20 minutes? Uh, we have to be out of here in just 20 minutes. <laughs> It, it was use a what a jig um, so to do your registration a device a I was ago. wondering if there were tools or ways to help with registration yeah when I did lithography way back in college I did use like pin holes in the block or in the um, stone mm -hmm. yeah. but I just wow. really wow. Yeah. Yeah. beautiful yeah. Yeah. hold it just hold it lower a little yeah. like like that, and up a little yeah, bit. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's gorgeous. Okay, Thanks. I'm just going to do one more double clean up. Yes, thank, thank you. you. And um, that really came out beautiful. I wouldn't do anything more. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, you were, did you stop short of one color? Or is this yeah, all? I was going to do four colors. There was going to be a mountain range in the background, but it'll be fine. Oh, right. It doesn't need the mountain range. No, it's yeah. 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 And what color would you have done the mountain range? Probably a really dark blue. Okay. And would that be before this or after? Before this. Mm -hmm. oh. But I had to show you the rainbow. Yes, yeah. thank you. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. it's beautiful. This has been very cool. Mm -hmm. Looks really good, I think. Mm -hmm. Last one. Oh, the book. I don't know where the. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. The best part is at the end you get to throw the block away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Now, Diane, yeah. if you got home and you said, oh, I really would like to do X, you could still do it since you haven't totally 
throw away the block. Yep, I just did throw away the block, and I really can't do it. I'm not going to bother, but the best part is I still have this. All I need to do is Start go get another piece of linoleum. No, I was just thinking if you said I really want to put a light hood on top of everything. Yeah, you could. Oh, you could. Yeah. Sure. Do you need your, your sketches for future reference or for these drawings you're saying? Yeah. Not usually unless I know there's something that I want to do in a series or like I did a loop print and I actually ended up kind of tracing on the print itself to create another drawing to do a derivative work. So I, I can always trace the print.